Uh, in, in the one world, I'm Charles Lawrence. If I go to the uh, Northwest Indian world, my name is Chuskin, which means Golden Eagle. If I, when I go to the Hopi people, my name is Saguaho, which means a turquoise heart, a pure-hearted person. And that was given to me by the Hopi after about 25 years of my relationship with the elders and, and, and working on behalf of the Hopi people. So they gave me that name in the baptism and they blessed me that way. Mm. And in the rest of the world, I'm Hey You. Because <laughs> I love to laugh a lot and uh, make other people laugh too. Yeah. <laughs> so what else do you want to know? Um, a relationship with the Four Winds? Well, I'm, well, I'm the, like the grandpa of the Four Winds. Uh, in 1989, uh, my Hopi mother, grandmother, Carolyn Twangyama, was invited to USSR by Raisa Gorbachev and this movement called the Grandmothers for Peace. And those years, no American airlines would fly into Soviet airspace. So we had to uh, land in Finland and then transfer to Soviet planes to go to Russia. We were there for one month. And then we came back here for a few days to rest your body before flying back to Hopi land. And my destiny has been that I've come back here every year. This is my 29th year of coming to Finland. Sometimes two, sometimes three times a year. And in uh, about 94, um, I had met some other people. One other man had been to Hopi land and uh, this Dinu grandmother. And then we had this, these gatherings here. Uh, and the idea was born to bring various shamanic traditions together because Finland had an old cultural tradition of shamanism. So uh, the dream of the Four Winds was born. And that symbol that we use is actually a Hopi symbol, although it's also a universal symbol. So uh, in 96, we met for the first time and uh, we met in another beautiful place in nature like this. And we had a great big drum there. And we had people from Africa, we are from Canada, native people. Uh, again, the four directions coming together in Finland. And here we are now in the 22nd year, which is amazing. And with all, with all groups, all cultures, there are periods of strength, and then you've got to revision what's happening. And uh, in uh, two years ago, on our 20th anniversary, uh, a Swami came from India, and I have been um, continually proposing this Hopi way of being open-hearted, uh, welcoming all people, and trusting that the forces of the universe, of, of the four winds, will bring us the, the, the correct people for now. So when Swami came to uh, our camp, uh, I was in the introductions moments of my, my speech, and he stopped me, and he stated that in his entire life, he had never known such spirit and such joy. Because I do not see myself as a spiritual person. I see myself as a spirited person. I believe in aliveness, not, not holiness. I believe in vitality, not, you know, not, again, not being holy or spiritual. I believe in having a good time. Life is that way. So uh, what's been interesting though, because when he saw that and he felt that energy, that I believe also helped the Finnish people understand more deeply what I had been saying all these years. And then uh, he came back last year, or you were here last year, and he was then saying that he had lost his heart in this community. He found something that this community had to offer. So uh, what had happened over the past winter is that now there is Four Winds Asia. They have done a gathering similar to this in Nepal, two or three gatherings in Nepal, in Northern India. 
And one of the uh, core images I get from the native people is that each person has got to find their own vision for being. You're not to follow some guru or some teacher. You've got to find your own journey in life. And the uh, I've been adopted by several nations over there in Canada and America. And each, each nation has given me its own special uh, gift, its medicine. Yeah. And from the Northwest people, they believe that no two people on the earth have the same thumbprint. None of us. No two people have the same cry. No two people have the same destiny. And it's the individual's uh, personal responsibility to find out why am I here. And with like the Hopi people and uh, grandmother introduced me to many other Zuni people, Pueblo people. They had these old beliefs that um, every baby when it's born is a gift coming to the people. We call that medicine coming to the people. And it's the responsibility of the parents and the elders to make sure that that baby feels loved, accepted. And uh, because they believe that, and they tell the parents, you know, they have the, you know, the baby, that you must make sure this baby feels loved. Because oftentimes, within six months of being born, the baby would demonstrate why they are here. They would reach for certain things. And these people never said no. Because that baby had to feel yes, permission. And a lot of these other religions and all, no, you're bad, you've got to be this or that. And that is, that is a brainwashing, um, it's, it's violence to a baby, an infant, to be told you're not good enough. I've got to fix you, you know. But that's not the native way. The native way is to give permission to that child to grow up with self-confidence, with a sense of, yes, I have a purpose, and when there's real love, uh, that person wants to share their gifts with the community. And so I had a lot of I had a lot of learning to do when all this came my way. And I have I am and have been an advocate, a voice. Uh, part of my history is that uh, I was given a vision 43 years ago about bringing people together. Our ancestors were all, are all agrarian. We, we, the, the Earth Mother was our guide. What worked, what didn't work. So uh, there was this one very famous uh, man in America, Joseph Campbell, uh, the mythologist. And he became my friend, my teacher. And so he sent me out to discover what that vision meant. I, took, I, said, I would go to different places and make an offering that I will help you come together again in a new way. And what happened, for example, in Utah, uh, the people came together, they liked the idea. And so for one year, I went four times on the turnings of the year. And then the second year, I set them free a little bit. But what happened then is the Red Nation, the Native Nation heard about this. And they liked what they saw. And we were not trying to be Indian. We were attempting to discover our own roots of belonging to the earth. So uh, what happened is, is also history in that way, in that um, eventually a, uh, a grandmother from the Shoshone Nation in Idaho came, she saw this, went back home, told her nephew about this, they came, they liked it, and all these people began to contribute. And then at one point, uh, I, because of the Christian missionaries, they were shaming people. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't do these, these things, you know. Mm -hmm. You should be pious and believe in Jesus and all that. Well, uh, so they took away their spiritual ways. 
And yet, because of this vision of mine, uh, this one particular ceremony has come back after almost 100 years mm. of being dormant. And there now, we started with 25 people, 30 people maybe, uh, 28 years ago. And now almost 2,000 people a year are dancing this dance. And it even has gone back to the people on the reserve, or that penitentiary they call a reserve. It's like a prison, really. But that's what the white man calls it. Uh, so these visions have helped many people. So um, that's why I'm here. <laughs> and it, it does my heart such a good, and I feel the elders believed in this way. And like we have Mona here from Hopi Land today. And she knew my, my mom, she knew her. And all these other elders who she knew and knew about, well, they were my teachers. So uh, it feels so good to me to have her here, you know. And then today when uh, the Korean shaman came with us to the ocean to make the offering, it was the same. The Korean way and that other way. I, I say thank you because this is meant for all of us. We all, we all can use the guidance. We can all feel better about ourselves. And rather than feeling you're bad or you've got a sin or there's something wrong with you, we need to feel good about ourselves. And that's why I'm, that's why I'm here. <laughs> you like? <laughs> I like. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. Yeah. Um, do you what do you expect about I mean about the Korean shamanism? Or? Well, I'm curious because years ago I had read some stories about Korean shamanism, and I know in Korea too the Christians try to put down Korean shamanism, but this is centuries old, and I have been to Tuva. You are Tuva is between Mongolia and Siberia. Yeah. And the shamans there, I was there one month, and they welcomed me, you know. And we were building the offerings, the fires, and all that. But this, to me, and what I'm feeling here, is this is an energy that comes through the ancestor line. And it's not easy being a shaman, in some ways. Because uh, many people come with their problems, and this and that. And what is all, the shaman is always uh, making an effort to create harmony. Yeah. There is a, uh, a story I learned from the Tibetans about the one, the shaman or the individual who is very focused on their journey and they'll just sit with their drum and their energy grows. And they say a shaman can have affect for hundreds of miles around, you know, and you can bring a new kind of harmony to the people, and the spirits know that, and that's to me where, where magic happens, how these things come to be that almost couldn't be, it's magic, how did this happen, so that, that's, and I'm so, um, the shaman and I this morning to watch her by the ocean and we didn't speak much English together and I can't speak any Korean uh, the joy total joy we are family and that's something again that uh, the elders had that in mind we're family we must come back together so. I'm looking forward to these days with with all everybody here. You know, all the sh all the Korean people here with the shaman, and what's going to happen? Because one thing I've learned that by coming here, being a part of all of this, we will, we will go home different people. We cannot be the same. Something happens. And a lot of religions or what have you, especially in America, the craziness there, um, they don't want you to meet other people. They're afraid, there's so much fear. But here we have to have trust and openness. And that's what I see in your people. You know? Because they've had hard times too, right? <laughs> yes. And they're still strong, they're, yeah. they're doing their best they can. And uh, last year I was saying to the people, we have entered into a time of loneliness. There are many, many people throughout the world who are lonely. And yet they are drawn 
by ma like magnets to where there's the open heart. And that was part of the Hopi way, is to keep your door unlocked, let people come. And grandmother and the other elders taught me that way. Yeah. So, how's that? <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Just open me up and away I go. Yeah. <laughs>